Hey Savvy Devs, it's Savvy Nick here, and today we'll be talking about how to set up a static IP address in Linux, as well as some of the terminology used when creating and working with networking in general. What I got in front of me here is Ubuntu 19, and by default Ubuntu and most other Linux distributions will assign an IP address dynamically using a DHCP server. A DHCP server is a network server that automatically provides, assigns, and manages IP addresses for devices on a network, such as your router. So let's jump into it and uh, change a static IP address graphically this time. So if we go up to the top right corner and then go into settings, or if you go under the wired connection that you have, so yours might be connected, mine's currently disconnected, you can go ahead and select the drop down and hit wired settings. And then it'll take you into your network settings here where we can make a change and make our current connection have a static IP address. Another way you can get to it is if we exit out is search for settings. So either through the show applications, we can just type in settings and press settings. At the bottom, you'll have uh, network settings, and we'll be in the same exact place that we were before. So in order to set up a static IP address here in Ubuntu 19, what we'll do is hit this little cog here on the right hand side and look for our wired connection. The steps will be also very similar for a wireless connection. As you can see here, there are just some basic details of the current wired connection. And of course, mine's not connected because I have it turned off. But uh, if we scroll over to identity, you can change the name of a wired connection. Maybe you know uh, a name like home network might be suitable, if I could spell that right, network. And then you can also set up a cloned MAC address and other various things here. But really just the network identity or alias is the main thing here that you can change. Feel free to do that. But what we're, what we're interested in is the IPv4 tab. And in here you can see that I've already set up a DNS and I'm using the Google DNS, which stands for Domain Name Server and is how your computer looks up and translates IP addresses to specific domains. So as you can tell, and I mentioned before, we have the DHCP method as the default method. What we want is this manual method. That allows us to go ahead and configure an IP address statically. And then you'll get three fields here, the address field, netmask, and gateway. First we'll put in an address. This will be a unique address in the IP address range where you're wanting your computer to exist. So uh, I'm just going to put it on the 192.168.1.10 because I know that's available on my network. So that's the IP address that this computer will be getting. You want to make sure it's unique. And then a net mask. So for me, this is a 255.255.255.0. And that's basically because I want to be able to change these, this last byte here from 0 to 255. And then finally we can put in a gateway or even leave the gateway blank. But if you do have one such as a router, you can put that the default gateway is that router or whatever other gateway device you might have. I do have one, so mine's 192.168.1.1. And then I hit apply. So in order for changes to take effect and why I had this off here, is you have to cycle the wired connection or wireless connection off and back on again just to make sure that your changes do take place. So I'm going to go ahead and cycle mine on. You can see that I'm connected at a gigabit connection. We'll go back in settings and see if we've successfully set up a static IP address and it looks like we have. You can see here that we have a link speed of 1 gig and an IPv4 address of the 192.168.1.10 that we set up. Below we still have the same hardware address. Uh, the default route goes through 192.168.1.1 which is our gateway. And we set up some DNS servers as well. 
and that's all set up through the IPv4 settings that we looked at. So we didn't type these in, but you can see that there is a DNS specified here. You can put in as many DNS servers as you want. You just need to separate them with commas. So that's how you set up a static IP address through the desktop network settings. That way you know and understand the graphical approach to this. This makes it much easier for you than having to go through and do it through terminal. Although with the terminal, you do have access to more advanced settings for your network. But for everyday users, this is usually more than enough. If you'd like to go through the terminal method using NetPlan, there's also another video available on the channel and I'll make sure to put a link in the description below. Also, if you're new and stopping by the channel today, make sure to subscribe below for more talks and tutorials in the future. Also make sure to let us know how we can improve these videos. So let's go ahead and do this in a different distribution to see if it's similar. I do have Kali installed, so let's go ahead and bring that up. And here we are in Kali Linux. It does seem a little bit different from the standard default desktop, but I've just kind of been messing around here. What we'll do is uh, set up the network settings in here as well. I'm gonna click the start menu so I can go ahead and search for settings and I'm just going to type in network and there's the advanced network configuration so let's go ahead and click on that now it's starting to look a little bit similar we can go ahead and choose our Ethernet wired connection and hit the settings tab inside the settings tab we see something very similar to a network name here up the top we can alias it to whatever we want network uh, one and then there's various settings for the uh, network one Ethernet connection. But what we're interested in is the IPv4 settings and currently the method is set to the automatic DHCP method. Well, as we spoke about earlier, we want to use the manual static method and we can add an address now. So let's go ahead and add an address in. We used uh, 192.168.1.10 before and the, the net mask is a little different here instead of the 255.255.255.0 net mask that you saw in the last distribution, it's asking for which bits are turned on for the mask. So all this says is the first 24 bits are turned on for the mask and the last eight bits are turned off, giving you a total of 32 bits. So 24 out of the 32 bits are high, which represents 255.255.255.0. Hopefully that makes sense to you. And then the gateway, you can simply put in the gateway that we had before or whatever yours is. So mine was 192.168.1.1. And we can put in domain name, name servers if we have them. I'm just gonna use Google's and separate them with commas again, 8.8.4.4. .4. And we should now have all of our settings here. So let's go ahead and hit save. So in order for this to take effect, I believe we're gonna have to restart Kali here. So let's just give it a reboot real quick. I'll do it through terminal, sudo reboot. And let's see if those IP settings took here. We can just do that through ifconfig. And as you can tell, now we have a 192.168.1.10 assigned to our first wired ethernet device, ETH0. So now Kali Linux is all set up for a static IP address. You might ask, uh, where does this come in handy? Well, if you have a network device that's not on the same subnet or IP address range that your computer is currently attached to, you can force your computer's IP address to be on the same subnet or IP address range by using a static IP address. And that will in turn give you access to that device. So this comes in handy when initially setting up network devices to be on the same subnet as your computer. But for Kali Linux here, the real trick is to make sure you reboot after you change those settings. Everything else is uh, pretty much the same there. And let's finally do it with the third distribution just to see if things are fairly similar since we want to really learn how to do this across uh, most Linux platforms. Let's take a moment and look at uh, elementary OS. And if you made it this far, go ahead and take a moment to like the video. It really does help me out. So now that I got my uh, elementary OS 5.1 Hera started up, I'll go ahead and check out how to change the settings in here. So if we hit this little network icon up here, it says that we currently have a wired connection and it's on. 
Let's go to the network settings, very similar to how we did it in Ubuntu. And here we can see we have our wired connection and IPv6 address, as well as a subnet mask and the router that we're connected to. I'm going to uh, hit the advanced settings, and then we'll look through tabs that are very similar to the four. Again, you can edit your connection name up here, so network, you can never spell network right, but network connection, <laughs> let's see, two. And then what I'll do is go through and look for the IPv4 settings. And we're gonna go ahead and change that automatic DHCP to manual. And you pretty much know what to do now. Hit the add button, put in the static IP address that you want to use. So um, again, I have a device on the 192.168.1 subnet network, and I'm gonna assign .10 to my computer. And then in the subnet mask here, we're gonna put the 255.255.255.0, put in whatever mask that you need. And then, of course, my gateway, which is uh, the 192.168.1.1 for me. And that all, of course, depends on the IP address range that you're trying to get to and wherever the device that you're trying to get to exists on. So, of course, you'll have to change that accordingly. You can always go ahead and go back to the method and select the automatic DHCP method. That will set it back to just grabbing an IP address from your gateway router. Let's go ahead and hit the Save button. And as you can tell, it did not apply that new IP address quite yet, did it? So uh, what do we need to do? Just like Ubuntu, go ahead and shut off the wired connection. And it tells you that you're disconnected and now offline. And interestingly enough, once we cycled the on and off button here, we have an unknown IP address. I'm not sure why. But uh, let's go ahead and go back into the advanced settings and the IPv4 settings. We look at this method, it's set to manual. The IP address looks fine to me and the gateway does as well. I guess it just didn't refresh, so let's go ahead and check it a different way. If we go back and let's set it to DHCP, I'm going to delete this, hit save, and toggle this off, and back on again. Now I've got an IP address, and let me get a tool in terminal. So apt get install net tools should help us out. Oh, that's right. Got to get rid of the. And now I have the IF config tool. So let's go ahead and try setting that IP address up manually once more here in elementary advanced settings in the network settings. Change the method to manual. We'll add an IP address in. And mine was 192.168.1.10, my net mask. So you can put in either way. You can do the 255.255.255.0, but it will automatically translate that down to the uh, 24 because it's just a different format you can use. It's more popular nowadays. Um, so in my gateway was 192.168.1.1. I'm going to go ahead and also put in a domain name server here. Let's put two in and save that. I'm going to cycle the wired connection off and back on again. And now I do see it here. So maybe that was just a visual bug because we have the exact same settings here, manual addresses and everything it seems to be good now. If I do IF config, I can see that my IP address changed to what I want it to be statically, and it's 192.168.1.10. So everything seems to be working, and this is a third distribution, and they've all had really similar methods here to changing the static IP address. Hopefully this helps you out uh, in finding your computer's IP address to something that you want to statically define it to, no matter what distribution you're on. It should be a very similar process to the three that we've done here. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial on setting up a static IP address graphically for Linux. Let me know what you think about the tutorial, and if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, feel free to post them in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos, and also make sure to like the video. Thanks for watching.